Yeah. What's your topic? What have you brought to the show? You today? know, my topic, and I don't mean to be a big turd in a punch bowl, but here I go. I, I uh, having been around a little bit um, now, uh, I, I read a great quote many years ago that I think is true to some extent, and 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 I'll explain why. And it's not meant to be a uh, uh, an admonishment or um, sort of a a fight picker quote, but I read a quote years ago from Winston Churchill that said, "Show me a man who's twenty and not a liberal." and I'll show you a man with no heart. Show me a man who's 40 and not a conservative, and I'll show you a man with no brain. Now, uh, what he, and, and mind you, the context in which that quote was made was probably in the th late 30s, okay? But I am probably now, as an older person, I'm very socially liberal mm. and financially conservative. Mm -hmm. I think it's because it's, you know, I earn my living and I pay a lot of taxes. What my topic is, I get, oh my God. And I think it's because that people can say things on net, on um, the web or Facebook or or Twitter with complete impunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they start to pick fights when, if you say, they'll say things like, you know, Barack Obama's the Antichrist or George Bush, that fucking Nazi. Well, the problem with that is that you, in my view, you automatically lose your place at the table of rational thought, sure. right? so that you can't, you know, it's like, dude, your ideology is showing. So what happens is you become such an ideologue that, or not you, one becomes such an ideologue that it it, it sort of inures you to whatever facts are available. Mm. So that whether, you, you know, so if you read the, the LA Times or the San Francisco Chronicle and you watch MSNBC and Fox News and CNN and whatever to make yourself, I mean, as, you know, as knowledgeable as you can about a subject and then have a, a debate or a discussion even a contentious debate in which it gets heated but the moment you cross over into ad hominem you know what you're you're just a republican asshole or you you're just one of those other fucking bleeding heart liberals who doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground well then there's no discussion right and that kind of stuff drives me nuts because it I know great people on both sides of the spectrum, and I would bet that most people who take that tack, that uh, attack, mm -hmm. tact, tack, right? Um, He's having a stroke. Right, I know. Excuse me, Garcon, could I have a seizure salad? Um, <laughs> but um, that's why I make the big dough, baby. <laughs> but no, the point is that when that happens, you just go, you know. With all due respect to people who live in L.A., like me, or San Francisco, or New York, or, or Miami, you know, the bastions of, of a lot of liberalism, there's a huge part of the country between the coasts, yeah. many who, of whom are really decent, lovely people. And, you know, my kid, the other day, we were talking about, um, oh, God, I can't believe that we still can't pass gay marriage in the state of California. I said, buddy, it, it'll happen. It, it'll happen. Now, I don't want the courts to do it. I'm one of those guys that says, I voted I, I voted against, you know, the measure that would prohibit gay marriage because my, my brother is gay. I, I have a very unique perspective as well. My brother is gay. I love him more than my own life. And my son is engaged to a beautiful woman from Nigeria whose parents are Muslim. So mm -hmm. I'm in a really unique position. And I was born and raised in Michigan. Yeah. Okay, so I'm a Midwestern boy. Melting pot. Right, with, a, with a, uh, a, a son whom I adore who's married to a woman of color, or is going to be, and her parents are from Nigeria and she's Muslim. And my brother's gay. So You got I, the whole spectrum. I got the whole spectrum. Really so when do. I see people on both sides of the issue who start to name call, I mean out of the gate, then... You, it's impossible to have a cogent, thoughtful discussion, which I think then, in my humble view, leads to what you end up having in, in you know, Washington, is you just have yeah. gridlock. Um, and and I understand that politics is a blood sport. I understand there's a lot of money involved. I totally get that. But from a grassroots level in which people try to discuss issues at the coffee shop, on camera, with your buddies, it just, you kind of cut off your nose to spite your face with all these right. really great people. I know wonderful people who are dedicated, dedicated deeply rooted Christian people who don't give a damn about whether or not you want to marry your boyfriend. Are, are you a decent person that mm -hmm. wants to help further the country? And I also know people on the left who are complete atheists, but they would they would have no interest in hurting anybody. It just isn't, their, their, their life isn't a religious event. But they don't name call and, and pigeonhole people 
with uh, with respect to their political persuasion. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of stuff that drives me nuts, man. So I don't mean, like I said, I don't mean to be a big downer. No, you've, you've, no brought it to, you've brought up great topics on the table <clears> that <throat> is definitely, uh, Colin Moriarty always over here. Yeah. L the living example of everything you're talking about in the good side, the positive side. Uh, Only. Colin cool. is the exact, he's <laughs> just like you. Yeah. Uh, socially liberal conservative when yeah. it comes to money and everything else and policy and so that when he sexually when I, evocative sexually evocative of I mean, course very right. I champion say, in the bedroom yeah. you know what if i were younger i would be all over you like white on rice thank you i appreciate that you're welcome i appreciate that i'd like what? to have a little snow job <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay that's oh, not, not, just yeah. Yeah. see what i just did there not to do, not to do the old the, uh, the old callback to the last topic but <laughs> When you saw Snow Job, <laughs> were you like, I can I can own this, or this one's going to be one that haunts me for the rest of my life? No, I just was glad to be working. Dude, I was 28 years old, 29 years old, so I was going, oh my God, I'm going to be working in cartoons. And I, you know what was the cool thing? Not to, to deviate too much, but when I first when I saw my first action figure, which mm -hmm. was oh, yeah. Snow Job, yeah. that to like a, a little boy mm -hmm. is bitching. Yeah, and I have that one. Oh, I do too. Yeah. And, and people send them to me. It's like, do you ever see this, Mr. Paulson? I'm like, yeah. yeah I, I got a room full of those right yeah. now. I signed the <laughs> job wall. Oh, my God. No, it's That's the greatest. It's, it's the wall wide. It's, and, yeah. it's just a little red mustache. <laughs> but so so you, you, are, uh, you are kind of socially liberal and, and fiscally. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean I'm, you know, I'm a Republican. Like, yeah. I say that uh, through and through. And right. every, people out there know that or whatever. Um, I just consider myself a real Republican. What we always talk about is, you know. Limited government. Yeah, limited right. government. And to me, we've talked about this many times in, in, on our other shows and stuff, but I consider myself very consistent. Mm -hmm. So the consistent Republican stance to me is actually pro-gay marriage because it's the government not telling you what to Tell do. What, in your bedroom. Right? Uh, it's the same reason why they shouldn't be, t you know, I, I believe in no income tax. Right. Like, so I'm, I'm very libertarian yeah. in a sense too, but. Like you're like Alexis de Tocqueville in that respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, I love Alexis de Tocqueville. Yeah. Uh, so do so Tim and I. Yeah. Yeah. He wrote, <laughs> Alexis de Tocqueville was a, a French writer that yeah. came to the United States and was one of the first people to write about the United States after the revolution mm -hmm. to explain what the hell was going on here to the rest gotcha. of the world. Gotcha. Um, and uh, so, you know, uh, to me, it's all about consistency. Right. And that's basically it. So the consistent view of a Republican should be out of your business. That means out of your bedroom. That means out of your wallet. Right. That means, like, out of your church. That means all of that kind of right. stuff. Like. The thing I always say, because I agree with you, that the internet's very hostile to people like me. Oh my um, goodness! And, and particularly people like you. If you're a young guy and you live in San Francisco, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're, you have and you have your constitutional tattoos right, you got, all right, over. You got a people. How can you not? What? What are you? You fucking fascist? And I go, fascist. Do you, do, and that's yeah, do you the even thing. know what a fascist. Do you know what fascism means? is? And what that does to me is, per, forgive me for it, no, interrupting. It's okay. you're not but interrupting. what that does to me is, as a person who is. Old, my parents were around for the Second World War, all right? So they really were, to a large extent, the greatest generation. Those people literally, and I get goosebumps, they literally saved the world. They saved the world yeah. from fascism and Nazism. So when I have firsthand knowledge of people who were around who say, here's what happened, you know, then you kind of want to go, you, you, you really dilute your argument to the extent you have one. When you resort to ad hominem attacks and you use terms like fascism, Nazism, to describe any American president, mm -hmm. I don't care what your political persuasion is. But if I want, if 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 I voted on both sides of the aisle, depending, I'm a I'm a registered independent. Yeah, me too. Okay, but the last time I I remember walking in front of a, a post office, I saw a guy who had a picture of uh, of uh, Barack and Stalin and Hitler. You know, uh, uh, the, the the inference was that these, you know, if you want to vote for Barack Obama, yeah. here's what you're going to get. And I said to him, I said, look, man, I'm not really crazy about Barry's policies either. Uh, and But elections have consequences. And he was voted and he won. And I'm not one of those guys who says, you're not my president. I'm an American. I right. want him to help the country. If he doesn't, he's out. And I will vote against him next time. But the to the extent you have a cogent argument what you're doing is not helping because mm -hmm. you're comparing an American president to people who are responsible for the deaths of hundreds of millions of their own people. Yeah. And I don't recall any American president or any American politician, you know, uh, promoting genocide against Americans. So, you know, that's like, let's have a discussion, not a pissing contest. 
So God bless you. That's yeah. incredible that you have the, 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 the courage of your conviction. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, anyone out there that knows me knows me for a long time knows that I don't give a flying fuck when anyone thinks about like Good about, the things, about yeah. the things that you know I say. I say what I say, and that's it. I mean, my Twitter account is no taxation. Right. My picture is the Gatson flag. So yeah. it's like, you know, but you see, the thing you brought up, you brought up Alexis de Tocqueville, so you obviously know your history. I, I know my history, too. I studied it, and it's my greatest love. More yeah. than video games, more than anything. More than me? And More than even Greg. Oh, oh man. God. And not more than snow job. You know, well, that's a different story. Snow job, American <laughs> history, Craig Miller. Yo, Joe. <laughs> but uh, oh my god, how about that? Oh my god, he's starting to perspire. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose my mind. Uh, but it, I think understanding politics and being able to talk cogently about politics yeah. really does require historical knowledge yep. and political historical knowledge, especially. So I agree with you when people bring up Nazism, for instance. Oh. Um, you, you have to be crazy to compare anything in this world, really, with the exception of a few things maybe going on in certain it, countries, right to now, Nazism, yes, right. yeah. especially in the United States. And then Stalin, of course, oh. who purged you know hundreds of thousands, millions even, of his own people yeah. and sent them to Siberia because they were political adversaries. Right. These things only really go on in like North Korea and certain other countries yeah. today. So to be able to... To be able to argue rationally about these things, you can't just throw terms around like that. See, the thing that I really, I'm really proud of is that no one can put me in a box. Right. You know, it's like I don't believe nobody in God. Put, right. I don't like, 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 I, you know, like all these things that Republicans like, like they, they're oh, you're a Republican. It's so like, you must be a God fearing right wing motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, no, God. like I'm, a, and they're like, well, why are you a Republican? I'm like, because I agree with the important parts of that platform, yeah. and to me, the important parts of the platform are not the social issues. Right. When younger people like us take over the Republican Party, which is already happening, my, my girlfriend and I were watching um, after the State of the Union, MSNBC. Mm -hmm. There's a guy in suburban Chicago, or, you know, like in the suburbs of Chicago, who was elected to the House, who's like 31 years old, a Republican dude, mm -hmm. who's like total. And I'm like, this is the future. Like, the he's, future. Because he's like, I just stay out of my pocket. I don't care what you do in your bedroom. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Right. You know, and like that's the that's, and, the, that's the platform yeah. that will win every time, and it and will. That's what I just I can't that, believe why people fight but, it so hard. Well, and I think I think you guys, you're right. There are a lot of younger, like my kid. My kid is 30, and you know, he's a pretty liberal guy and all that. But he's he he doesn't. Well, I shouldn't say he doesn't. He's starting to understand that what he is is socially liberal. Yeah, and uh, because you know, I'm in show business. I've got lots of gay and lesbian friends, and that meant nothing to me. It really, truly was about, like MLK said, about the content of their character. Mm. So uh, when I hear people making remarks, and uh, you know, on uh, when I hear people like like Harry Belafonte referring to Condoleezza Rice as the slave master's bitch for her political, this is a woman who came from nothing and rose to be the Secretary of State. She's now a full professor at State. She can do whatever she wants. Yeah. But but because of her political persuasion and because she doesn't toe the line mm. with respect to the large voting bloc of, of African Americans, Harry Belafonte and, you know, Al Sharpton and guys that are supposed leaders, um, um, Julian Bond, will refer to them as, yeah, well, you know, what's his name? Um, um, uh, Colin Powell, yeah, he's, he's uh, oh, all he is is George Bush's house nigger. That's vile yeah. talk. That is not discussing saying, I don't like their policies, here's why. Here's why, if you're interested in what I have to say, vote against these people. Or don't. But that's Everyone's just, looking for a soundbite. Right. They're looking like, for right? a soundbite that is so angry. And so and, and it's the same thing with people on the on the hard, hard right. But what happens to me when, when people take our circumstance and, and like the other day I made some remark about about um uh you know, my, my heart really goes out to those to the, the people in, in France at uh Charlie, um, you know, uh, Hebdo. Hebdo. Yeah. Uh, I, I said, you know, uh, I, I, any, any prophet, small p in quotes, and that was meant to, but any prophet who engenders this type of vitriol or angry response on their behalf can kiss my First Amendment loving ass. Realizing that nobody's going to probably put a, put a fatwa on my head. Who knows? I'll walk outside. But the first thing that happened was people saying, oh, see, now you're comparing Muslims to... No, that's not what I said. I said that these are bad people. And we talked about Stalin, um, Mao, Hitler. The vast majority of Germans were not Nazis. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of Chinese people were not were not interested in, in the executions that Mao Zedong... You know, the... Um, uh, the vast majority of Russians were not Stalinists, like you said, his own people, right? But the the majority, and, and the vast majority of Muslims are not, so far as we know, interested in killing people for their religious uh, ideology. 
However, in circumstances like we have in the world now, in parts of the, of the world, the peaceful majority is irrelevant. So to, to say, well, most of them are nice, of course they are, and my, my in-laws are Muslim, they don't want to kill anybody. But we have to be aware of the fact that, that there are people who, who just will execute children. You, get, you know, because they can't recite an... Uh, uh, uh. So anyway, my point is with all this stuff, they start to, you know, folks who get down that, that angry road will start to compare the United States foreign policy with, well, you know, look, look how we're imperialist pigs and look what we've done. You know, I'm a, I'm a patriotic guy. And yeah, everybody's made mistakes, but you kind of want to go with guys like Bill Gates in the world who inoculate children to the tune of a billion dollars a year and Jonas Salk who gave the world the polio vaccine and my parents' generation who went over and stopped Hitler, you go to Eastern Europe and talk to people who are my age, who were around when, you know, the Iron Curtain was still around. And, and, and a lot of them have great respect for the United States. So by and large, when it all shakes down and you're a student of history, it's been a pretty good force for good by and large, you know. But to compare, like you said, any Americans, politicians with all these despots makes me crazy. Yeah, it's weird, like the... You know, a lot of people, a lot of people might not know. I mean, just just to illustrate, further illustrate the point of the Nazis, and we went over there in '44, obviously, and we took them out, but with the help of the Soviets. Yeah. But the, the Germans were so the Germans were so afraid of the Soviets that they would run towards the Western Front so that they wouldn't get so they knew they were going to get captured. Yeah. They didn't want to get captured by the Russians. Yeah. Um, so that says a lot about Americans and the and the way even Europeans looked at us in the '40s. Yeah. That they looked at us as liberators and that they knew that we weren't going to fuck with them. Right. You know, and that they didn't know what the Soviets were going to do. And obviously the Soviets built a wall and yeah. then had the iron, you know, both literally and figuratively. Um, so, yeah, I agree. Like, I, I don't want, you know, like like calling Obama a Bolshevik or something Jesus. like that. It's like, it's like, do you know what Bolshevism is? It is, right. And like how violent and terrible it was and how many people died because oh of Bolsheviks. Oh, my God. Like, th that's, that's the kind of thing that I don't, I don't, I don't like people throw around words that they don't understand, and the and they don't because a lot of people just don't like history, and, don't, and that's and that's they fine, don't want to take talk, the time. Yeah, and d just don't talk about it because yeah. you're embarrassing yourself. But the major thing that I I like about the way I approach it, and it seems like the way you approach it, is just that you can't put me in a box. I am who I am. I stick with the Republican Party because I think we can change it, and it's slowly right. going to become the Libertarian Party, and it already is right. becoming that. It's very obvious. Oh, I voted for Harry at, Brown. I, yeah, I totally. But, I, and look yeah. at look at like uh, the rise of someone like Rand Paul. Rand Paul. Like, like who's not even really a Republican, who's very Libertarian, who yeah. goes to somewhere like Berkeley and gets a standing ovation. How about that? How you about know, that? from yeah. the people that he's talking to there, which is unheard of. Unheard of. You know, and, for and, a Republican to go and, into something yeah, like that. Yeah, and the fact, and there are more and more people, you know, doing that. But the thing is that I, I totally agree with you. I have no desire, even if I disagree with Barack's policies. He's not a Bolshevik. He's not the Antichrist. He's not a Nazi. He's not a. He's not a. You know, the People's Republic of Chicago. You, you know, and he's not a Muslim extremist. Right, not a Muslim extremist. And he, was, and he was born in Hawaii. He was born in Hawaii. <laughs> Give it a break, Jesus Christ! You know, Colin, are you familiar with Thomas Paine? Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a great quote. I don't know how I came across this. I don't know if you... Have you heard this one? Uh, I yeah, guarantee he's heard it. Probably. Is it from uh, Common Sense? It, that was his most famous... And, and the Federalist Papers... He from... says, to, to argue with a man who has renounced the use and authority of reason and whose uh, philosophy consists in holding humanity in contempt is like administering medicine to the dead or endeavoring to convert an atheist by scripture. I love that quote. I don't that's know. Right. I, I think, that's, I I think that's from Common Sense, which he is wrote it? in... I mean, that was... You know, he wrote in the mid-1770s, which was basically... Thomas Paine died penniless and stuff like that, but during the the you know the beginning of the revolution, post Tea Party, but really before or around Bunker Hill and stuff like that, um, you know he was like the 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 writer of the revolution. Yeah, he was like he was the one who was inspired. Well, and, and it's really something. I mean, when when you studied it, and I go back, I, this is so it's great about this technology. A few years back, I bought an app called uh, U.S. Documents, whatever. It was a dollar, and it's every document germane to democracy starting with the magna carta to barack obama's most recent really you know, everything. everything wow i mean yankee doodle dandy is on there the constitution the the um constitution of the first iroquois nation the mayflower compact everything that's been germane to our republic um and including the magna carta which of course is what our democracy is based on right but fascinating stuff and when you read george washington's first inaugural acceptance speech oh my god it's unbelievable. I mean, I don't even know what courage is compared to what these guys and and women did. And what you know, the the you do, and and we all have a general idea. But when you read what these people wrote, I mean, they really were literally saying, I, "I'm gonna die. I will die for this. Fuck you, people. 
This is no way to live. We are, we are not, you know, and so at the beginning when they see, we, uh, we are endowed by our creator. They don't say God. They say our creator, with, you know, with certain inalienable Yeah, rights, a, lot, right? a lot of these men were deists. They weren't right. even Christians. They, were, they weren't even Christians. They were deists. They were Christians, a lot of them, but there was a lot of deists. Right. Classical but, liberalism is right. deists. But, but the, the fact is that they, they were like, whatever it is that put us here, we are born with these certain rights. And the king of England, nor anybody else, can, can usurp those from us. And we're willing to, to die. Everything. And... And they weren't always the most popular. There were a lot of Tories that were, you know, kind of going, wait, 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 wait. Before you start going down this road, the Brits, you know, they got a lot of money and they're, you know, supporting us. So we pay a little extra tea tax. But luckily, our guys, you know, so, but it's it's incredible to hear them. And when you read Patrick Henry's, the whole Patrick Henry speech. Mm-hmm. Give me liberty. Yeah. That, the last bit, of course, is I know now, of course, others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. I mean, it gives me goosebumps. But the whole thing is like that. Where he just, you can see him standing up at the, at, you know, in, in Philadelphia going, I don't think you motherfuckers get it. <laughs> you know? What's your story? What's your story? Are you willing to, to, to give up your plowshares? Are you, are you willing to do this? Because if we're going to do this or we're not. And I don't give a shit what the rest of you say, but if we don't do this, I just assume be dead. And it's impassionate. It's really, and, and you can find this stuff. So then, at least if you decide to make an argument against certain things or pro certain things, you're relatively, you know, you don't just say, yeah, you're a Bolshevik or you're a fascist. I feel like, you yeah. know, I feel like also just to kind of bring it, bring it back to just people making ridiculous statements or ridiculous comments is that is a sign of our times, right? That yeah. is a sign of like, I want to be heard. I don't know how to, I don't have the time or I don't have the, the, the sort of pulpit or the, or the outlet to be heard. So I'm going to scream the most offensive statement I possibly can into the ethos and hopefully someone acknowledges me. Right. And, and that's, that's sad. It is sad. And I don't care whether it's, you know, of course it's disgusting when the Westboro Baptist church says, well, you know, God hates fags and all that. Of course they're stupid. They're useless people. And the more that we pay attention to them, the more more power we give them. Of course they're assholes. We, we have a country in which it's not against the law to be an asshole. Thank God, America. Right? I mean, <laughs> that's what we put on. I mean, that's that's the perfect thing, though. Is that there, there, there should be no limitations to those things. Unfortunately, you being offended, for instance, is not really a, a constitutional issue. It isn't, and I, you know, it's not against the law to be offensive. It's against the law to be hurtful and right. and um, um, uh, slanderous. Yeah, we have those laws on the book, and you know, I, when I when when my brother and uh, when uh, whom I, I love my brother, I'm so proud of him. For many reasons, not just because he's, you know, a, was a, a gay kid growing up in Flint, Michigan. God help, help him. That's not popping off? That's oh, not popping off? For man. <laughs> Holy <laughs> smoke. But when he discusses his, who he is, the fact that he's gay is about fifth or sixth on, you know, on the... What defines him? Yeah. And I think a lot of, most people are like that, mm-hmm. you know? So anyway, forgive me. I, but thank you for allowing me to vent my spleen. I no, I wanted it. to. No, uh, the, good, I always come away from when we have these, when we go down this road with everybody, how do we fix it? Yeah. We have the spectrum, right? Where like e- even the cable news are against each other and talking shit on each other and the president or the Congress or whatever. What's the way to fix it, Colin? What's the way to fix it, Rob? I don't know. I mean, to me, I, I always thought, I mean, it's interesting you brought up the revolutionaries because there was a lot of disagreement between the yeah. revolutionaries and, and a lot of them didn't like each other. And, and a lot of those, I mean, even with Jefferson and Adams, that yeah. feud went on for decades and they didn't really repair them their, their feud until the 1820s. So it's a long way after the Treaty of Paris was signed. And I think that a lot of the things that have to happen is that these guys were deliberate, right? Like these, the, the reason that most, like if you took a list of 25 most important Americans, 20 of them are from that era mm-hmm. because they, not only were we blessed in this country or in the colonies to have a group of very smart men alive at the same time, which was very serendipitous, um, but that they were passionate and deliberate in the things that they said and the way they, they felt. I, to, to your point, what we don't have today is, and there's no stakes really. Right. So mm-hmm. like people don't understand that they were all going to die. die. You know, and, like, willing, like, and willingly, like, and if the British got like, people don't really appreciate that. They really have to think about it. If the British got their hands on them, they were fucking finished. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and that's what Benjamin Franklin said. We will all hang together or right. we will all hang separately. Right. You know, and that like they were in Philadelphia in the capital, which was the capital at the right. time. And the, the Tories were in New York City. They were only 100 miles away and they can get captured at any time. They didn't yeah. know who to trust. They didn't know like anything. And they won against all odds, oh. you know, and. They, they put their, you know, John Hancock, 
for instance, who signed his name yeah. big enough so that the king of England can see his name or whatever. That he was, was on purpose. Dick. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And he was a huge dickhead, yeah. right? But he also he also owned one five hundredth of the wealth of the entire yeah. 13 colonies. One five hundredth. Yeah. It's a ton of money. Yeah. And he put it all on the line. Yeah. You know, and all these guys were wealthy. There was very few, like, you know, just normal people. They were people with a lot to lose, and they were people with a lot to gain, to be honest, right. too. I mean, this is a very much Howard Zinn would argue this, that they were part of the revolution was to protect their own wealth. And that could be, that could, that could that's an argument. That's an interesting argument. Very that's interesting awesome, historical argument. <laughs> yeah, but I, but, but I think it is an interesting argument, but I don't think that, I, I think you can still make the argument that it was not the, the main Thrust. No, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I don't think so. I love Howard Zinn, but I don't agree with the, the super very liberal historical, revisionist historical thing that yeah. the, the revolutionaries were very selfish. I don't I don't see it that way. Nonetheless, they risked everything. Yeah. And there today, when you're on Twitter in 2015, you're yeah, like, not, oh, you got and, no skin in the game. Yeah, Barack Obama's a, a Bolshevik. You know, well, what the hell are you going to lose yeah. about? Like, what people don't realize is that, point, they're slowly, is that they're slowly whittling away because we can't get a coherent group Consensus. together yeah. because of the nature of the country and that is the nature of the democracy that was intentional you know was yeah. the republic was built to make sure that's why the senate's there to make right. sure things are glacial right so that nothing bad happens right and if, until we can get until we can get in a common ground and, and like to what rob was saying where the other side isn't bad yeah. The other side just doesn't agree. And in fact, what are the things that we can agree on? Who the hell wants to pay more taxes? That's right. weird. That's a yeah. weird thing. Yeah. So maybe we can, so maybe we can, you know, we all care about our families. We all care about, you know, something like the space program or something like start right. small right. And, and work your way up bigger and put some skin in the game and risk something right. because there is no risk like the revolutionaries had. There is no risk like Abraham Lincoln or FDR. That's why they're great. That's right. why there are no great men today. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That's a great point. And, you know, George Bush wasn't a great man. Barack Obama is not a great man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, like, who's going to be the next great man or woman? Or woman. That's going to come up and say, enough already. Right. With the vitriol, like, we, we are, the empire is falling right. apart. Right. Well, that's, you know? what, yeah. <laughs> well said. Here, here. I mean, that was beautiful. Sounds like Colin's a great man. No, you should. <laughs> and, well, that's what would be, and, and part of it is because of this ad hominem vitriol. Because, you know, I, I, I. I think I'm I'm kept I brought brought her up once before, but Condoleezza Rice is a brilliant woman. She's a f courageous woman. She's a woman who knows what it's like to have zero. She grew up in the Jim Crow South. Her mother, you know, was a washed floors, and now she's like a concert pianist and a Stanford. Uh, but why would anybody, once you've been down that road, if let's say she was interested in in running, um, or being involved, and she knew that she was going to be subjected to sure. She would go, and you know, if I were your age and I was driven and all this, there'd be a part of me if I were married. Not do I really want to have somebody yeah, pull bring everybody with yeah, me yeah. Yeah. and drag my kids through the mud and all of that because their father's a fascist or their father's a Bolshevik? Oh my God! So that's part of what happens is because you, you, you know, and, and and it does take a lot of money to run, mm -hmm. and you know, you can say, well, I've already got a hundred million dollars. Do I really, 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 really want to be president? Do I need that, I yeah. may be the right guy. Screw it. I'm going to live in the Bahamas. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I don't know about... anyone would subject themselves yeah. to either. I mean, Colin, I... Check it. is Mitt Romney coming back? Is he going to yeah, run for is. a third? And, and I, and I... How do you feel about that? I'm fine with him. I mean, let's be honest. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really honest. This is my opinion. Mitt Romney was completely robbed of that election in 2012. Mm -hmm. And it was because of a biased media. And I'll say that over and over and over and over again. They did everything they possibly could to sandbag him. What's the evidence of that? After the first debate when he destroyed Obama, yeah. everyone was surprised that he was a person and not the caricature that they made for a year in the mainstream media or whatever. Right. So I'm interested to see what, like he should, all things being equal, he should have won and he should have won easily. But because of the, because of the, the, the narrative, yeah. and I'm not saying that because the same thing happened to John Kerry. So it is not a yeah. partisan Republican thing. Like the, the, they swift boated, they swift -boated their him. shit out of him yeah. in 2004 and he lost. Right. You know, and, you know, obviously the, the courts stole Gore's election in 2000. So, um, you know, it's not a partisan thing because I'm a Republican. I feel the way I just I, objectively as a student of politics and history, that was a clear as the day is long. But I'm a Chris Christie guy personally. Okay. And you I, love bridges. I love bridges. I like, I'm a Northeast Republican, and You've so is he. I'm a Rockefeller that. Republican. I'm yeah. an old school Republican. Okay. Yeah. And and I like, he's, I like someone like that. Now, yeah. he's pro-life and all that kind of stuff, and that's fine. I don't, I re actually respect that position very much. But I'm pro-choice, and that's fine, because again, that's Same not way. the issue that matters no, it is. to me. I'm not like, a one-issue guy. No. And, you know, you can have people argue Roe v. Wade forever, and look what's going to happen. If Mitt Romney goes in, Roe v. Wade... Oh, for God's sake. Are you kidding me? He's not a, he's really not, think he's not a dictator. It's a constitutional <laughs> amendment. There's no fucking way Mitt's going to go. He can't via uh, uh, presidential fiat or by, via presidential with a swift. He can't 
undo the Constitution. Just say that's right. over with. You know, if, if the if the worst that happens, if somebody becomes a states' rights issue or whatever, you know, please don't let that be the reason you don't like somebody, right. you know? But so many people are, are so myopic about this crazy stuff, and they don't know how an amendment works or how the Constitution works. And you don't have to be a constitutional scholar to know how it works. That's what's so crazy is that Colin's point is that you don't have to go to school for the next five years to figure out how to make your case. Just don't be an idiot. Right. You know, just that's how we solve it. Harder than don't be an idiot. Yeah. Oh, just just well, try that, to speak from the most intelligent standpoint possible. Right. Well, that's, um, why, that's, why, that's why there are fewer, you know, there, there are so few amendments, 10 of which were passed right away. So yeah. it's like, it's very hard to pass Very amendments. hard to pass and, one. And, 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 know, to, not, and to undo one. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We had, we had, we did undo a couple and, and it's, you know, specifically prohibition, I guess, but it's like, you know, to me, so to answer your question, Greg, it's simple. Like, Put some skin in the game. Try to figure out a, a, a solution to certain problems. Tackle things one at a time, I think, too. But stop with the vitriol and the hatred because, you know, a lot of people out there, I appreciate, you know, the internet can be a tough place for a lot of people. I don't think that in this particular way people appreciate how difficult it is for someone like me oh, because man. I don't toe the line. I'm in a liberal, I'm in a very liberal city oh. and a very liberal industry. And I don't care. Yeah. I you're, really don't give a, a shit. You're a courageous man. You it's know? difficult. And and I've gotten where I've gotten not caring. Yeah. I know I could have... I have 92,000 Twitter followers. I'm very thankful for that, right? Fucking very, number dropper I'm, over here. No, but listen. It's but, 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 I'm, I'm just fucking on. Sorry. <laughs> but when Mitt Romney was running and I was po posting about, you know, how I like Mitt Romney and I really oh. enjoyed him, whatever, I lost thousands and thousands yeah. and thousands of followers and it didn't stop me because I don't care. Right. And... It's so, gotta be you. So to me, it's, you know, we have to figure it out, like... Twitter can be an embarrassing place, and the internet can be an embarrassing place. There are so many Twitter feeds I go to just to look at to see how embarrassing it got. Oh, you know, Jesus. because of these people that just shout and yell, and it could be any people in the industry, writers, politicians, whatever, that have no interest in dialogue or discourse, not understanding that because of the split, 50-50 split, which is not going anywhere in this country between right. Republican and Democrat, with the very small middle ground that, that sways every election. Right. That it's never going to change. There's always going to be 40 or 45% Republican and 40, 45% Democrat. So learn how to work together. Yeah. You know? Who passed the the, uh, the highway bill? A Republican. That would never happen today when Eisenhower did that. that Who is passed a huge... the Voting Rights Act of 1964? Yeah. It, 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 I mean, all that kind of stuff was, you know, in 64 when, when Johnson was, you know, president... You know, there was all these kinds of things, you know, working with a Republican Congress in many in many respects, you know, and you can you can go down that stupid rabbit yeah. hole that people want to go yeah. down. It's like, oh, oh, you're a Republican, blah, blah, blah. You mean other oh, but you're a Democrat, the party of the slave owners. Right. Like right. I could I could. That's I why could they call say, them Dixiecrats. Yeah, exactly. And I so you can go down. George that Wallace. Bit. Oh, my God. Come on. But why? Yeah. The parties of here changed. and now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I, no, I totally I can win that. I can win that fight, Every especially time. by historical knowledge, ten out of ten times. Yeah. And like, I'm and I'm not going to go down that road because it's useless. It's useless. It's pointless. But it, you know, th that's the thing is that you have the you can back up your argument, and then it just doesn't become useless prattle. It, it you have a a, a a a a cogent, thoughtful discussion to the extent the other person wants to have one. You know, I it that kind of oh God bless you, man. That's it, it's it's just. <laughs> Thank I, you. I Next really, show we're launching is political talk. God bless, and Rob. God bless an atheist. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, but no, that's very impressive. And thank you. Thank you for letting me. Thank you for, if you're still with us they after are. that. No, they're, 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 they know that that's a topic after oh, that. Okay. It's, 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 it's well documented here. Well, See, it's, 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 it is. I'm, I'm, I'm we, appreciate, we appreciate that. No, I'm like passionate great, about great, that. Sorry, last you. thoughts on this to answer your question of how do we fix it. We are fixing it right now because we are... I think, well, probably maybe not me and Tim, but you three are definitely um, holding up a lot of the weight of that. But I think a large part of it, and like we talked about last last week with, uh, was it last week or yeah, Felicia. when we had Felicia, where we talked about freedom of speech and we said, you know, the only way to fix these things is to keep fighting the good fight, but also put out, put out the right perspective right. and try to get people who are your audience or your fans or right. people that want to help support you in, engendered with that perspective. Mm -hmm. Great idea. And that's, you know? that's, and that's exactly all you can really what, do. That's what I love to do. When I, I do a lot of personal appearances. I was on the road two months and changed last year and starting again this week, I'm going to be doing it again. And every now and then somebody will ask a question like that. That's why this is, this is heaven for me. Because <laughs> when, when, um, our spare bedroom, <laughs> all the, these are Rob's angels. That's hot. And I'm in San Francisco. Anyway. Um, so, but no, but it's great. So somebody will occasionally will ask you, well, you know, what are you about politics? Well, do you really want to know? Because I, I lean this way, uh, uh, Republican sort of in this way, socially liberal and Democrat, blah, 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 if you want to. But you can't really, you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really interested in facts and making my own decisions based on thought, not interested in fighting. Mm -hmm. So if you are want to take anything away, I'm glad that you love my characters and please do. But do me a favor. Read the Constitution. Just read it. 
you know, you don't have to be a student. Just start that way. Or read the Federalist Papers. Oh, or read, read you know, papers. yeah. So what is that? Well, it, look, you don't need to know exactly how many congressmen there are. Just just read these documents and give yourself a little bit of knowledge. And on whatever side you want to be in, make an argument from a thoughtful, learned place, not from a place of going, you know, well, my dad, you know, my dad said all the people, this guy wears a earring, me goddamn hippie, faggot, pinko, goddamn. That's obnoxious. That's awful. Yeah. And there are people who, the, the fact is that I, when my son said, hey, I'm dating this girl I really like her, I met her at USC, blah, blah, blah. Then he brought her home to visit us. And you know what I was so I was proudest of? Is the fact that when he brought Basola, opened the door, we had no idea that Basola was a, an African-American. Well, no, not an African. She was born in, in Nigeria. The beautiful thing is that it never occurred to my son that he had to, pave the way say that yeah right how great is that i grew up in flint michigan which is now under control of the feds right haven't been run by the democrats for 30 years yeah. <laughs> like like detroit anyway yeah. but forgive me um nonetheless if I, if that had been my situation even though my parents were pretty cool i would have had to say just yeah so i think so. heads up mom and same dad with me is like i mean i come from a, i come from a very liberal italian background but why you know some of my relatives are jersey i don't know I, there is a little bit of that baked in sort of yeah. racism that I would have thought, okay, I have to prepare my family. Oh my for god! This. And and she's a lovely woman, and it and it it never occurred to my son whether she was black, brown, green, orange, white, clear. Right. He judged her on the content of her character. Yeah. Period. I mean, I feel like the that most... is awesome. I mean, that's crazy. Right? I feel like my generation, and of course, it's not solved, and I would never say it's solved, but like it would never cross my mind to tell my Isn't mom. Isn't that great, though? Either. How yeah, wonderful is that that we're in a place where we can see our children? Uh, you guys are all known to be my kids, and how great that we can see somebody. And I don't think it's just being in San Francisco. I think there are a lot of people who would say, I mean, sure, there are pockets, and there are, there's always going to. We get that. What about? I get that. I get that there are rednecks. I get that there are crazy, you know, knuckleheads on both sides of the issue, but you know. The, the times, as Bob Dylan says, are a changing, and and it's wonderful that you fall in love with somebody, not based on what your parents are going to say, what, or what to society what is going to love, say. Yeah. yeah, there are still issues where they go. My God, she was going to Sam Houston University. My son and and she would go out to dinner in Houston. He said, God, we got some crazy looks. And he said, But I love this woman. Yeah. yeah. And my parents are cool. I'm cool. That's all that you know. How great is that, right? That's dope. So anyway, um, again, my spleen is vented. Thank you. You're welcome. Hope I didn't get any on you. Your toes are all right. <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> but with the keys, I kind of spleen around.